Well, it is clear the global pandemic is taking a devastating toll on the economy, both here and right around the world. And now some new projections show just how bad that toll is. The economists at Export Development Canada saying that our economy will shrink by more than 9% this year. And that would make Canada the hardest hit developed economy in the world. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. They expect Canada to rebound with better than 6% growth in 2021 the best we have seen in generations. Well, Peter Hall is the Chief Economist at Export Development Canada. He joins right now in Ottawa. So, Peter, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure, Michael. Anytime. They, uh, you know, uh, as, well, as you know, rather, there is a push right now by some to reopen the economy to help minimize the uh, economic hardship people are experiencing. Uh, but you suggest, if you look at these numbers, that the reopening of the economy right now may not be the restart some may be hoping for. Why is that? Well, look, Canada, uh, in our position in the world economy, has three disadvantages. One of them is that our consumers entered this COVID period fundamentally weak. We are quite indebted, and uh, our debt-to-income ratio stands at 180%. Now, just to put that in perspective, the U.S. had a debt-to-income ratio of 165% percent going into the global financial crisis. They've actually done better. Their rate is now down somewhere between 140 and 145 percent. So we're way up at 180 percent. That puts us in a position of fundamental weakness. We've also got a housing bubble going on in the country in case anybody didn't notice. There are other disadvantages and weaknesses, though. One is we're a very trade-dependent nation, and global trade is arrested at the moment. It's really come to very much of a standstill in most industries. And finally, we are very oil and gas dependent. So those three things mean that uh, we're being hit especially hard as we come into the COVID period. Except that you, you point out the United States doesn't have the debt ratio that Canadians have. We know that in the U.S. there is an even larger push right now to restart that economy. And given the, the amount of trade Canada does with the United States, will that not help the Canadian economy in the months to come? Absolutely. This is all about how the economy actually emerges from this particular period. So having our number one trade partner being the nation that is going to lead the rest of the world through the uh, upsurge, according to our outlook and according to the outlooks of the IMF, the IIF and other organizations out there, uh, that is a huge advantage. They're a locomotive that is actually going to pull our trade sector forward. That's about... Uh, 60 to 64 percent of our economy right there so so you make a great point that that is a great advantage coming out of this uh, but you also but if you look 60 64 percent that would suggest to me that there are parts of the economy that are going to do better post this uh isolation period than others what are the parts of the economy that will fare better what are those that need to be watching out for some rough months ahead well, the, the, it's, that's an excellent question. No industry is untouched by this, but clearly some are far more touched than others. The entire tourism industry can probably write off this year, and that's extremely painful for them. So air carriers are going to have a hard time coming out of this. The aerospace industry, which is big inside of Canada, not just in terms of aircraft, and parts manufacture, but also in terms of simulators and so forth. We have some companies that are leading edge companies in the rest of the world. And of course, they're going to be affected by this. The auto sector isn't going to get out of this easily either. And uh, so those three, I think, are ones uh, that are under particular duress. Finally, I would say, and this is not so much a central Canada thing as it is a Western Canada thing, but the oil and gas industry really is not going to see a huge rebound coming out of this. That's because there's just so much world supply right now. Even with the demand recovery, supply is going to be compromised. Mm -hmm. I wonder what happens when a second wave of COVID-19 comes. Because you, you talk to, to medical professionals and researchers out there, they say there's no way of avoiding the COVID uh, second wave. So are we looking at a sped up crash boom cycle here? That really remains to be seen. Nobody can say definitively how we're going to come out of this because this is really uncharted territory. We can go back to the Spanish flu of 1918, 1919. We can go back to SARS. We can go to the Zika virus or H1N1. And what we see inside of all of those is there's 
immense human pain. But studies show that we actually come out of that economy-wise fairly handily. Now, the big question is, do we come out of this with a V-shaped recovery, or is it more like a W? Do we have a wiggle on the end of this that talks to us about recurrence of virus? Well, that happens in most cases, but that's not nearly as deep as the first drop. Uh, so that is to be expected, but it doesn't usually get in the way of a more fulsome recovery of the economy. Okay. Uh, I wonder then, uh, what are your thoughts as to how government should respond? Because obviously we've seen Ottawa and the provinces pump out cash to help Canadians and businesses stay afloat in this moment in time. Is that the way of the rest of 2020, do you think, as a way of helping Canadians get through this year? When you look at the data on the virus itself, the countries that have been most successful at suppressing the rate of infection are countries that clamp down very hard on this. One of the advantages that Canada has going into uh, the COVID period uh, was a very quick response uh, to this relative to other countries in the rest of the world. So that's one huge advantage. A second one is that we had more policy firepower than most other places. We had interest rates that were actually trying to get back to what we would call the neutral rate. We had already started increasing interest rates. So that gave us some interest rate reduction move, unlike the European Central Bank, which had no room to move. So we in the United States actually had some movement there. And finally, we actually came in with healthier fiscal books than the rest of the world. So our debt to GDP ratio, especially at the federal level, was the envy of the rest of the OECD. So this gives us enormous, uh, an enormous advantage and flexibility in terms of the way that we actually, as a government, uh, attack things. And of course, we at Export Development Canada are key at actually getting uh, liquidity out to the businesses that have found they've had to go into either partial or complete shutdown. And so those money are actually going out into the marketplace right now exactly at the time when they're needed. So, you know, it's hard to know exactly how to get it right when it comes to policy, but Canada is doing a bang-up job, I think, as we compare ourselves with the rest of the world. Peter, good to speak with you. Thank you for this. Nice to chat, Michael. And you. That is Peter Hall, Chief Economist with Export Development Canada.